Coming up next on the Jeff Crilly Show, you'll meet an international expert in a healthy living lifestyle that goes back some 3,000 years. Her story just ahead. Many are predicting that the worst is yet to come, which is unfortunate, said one person here. Until now, they've enjoyed the reputation of being the nation's icebox. Watched a burglar in his home this morning by webcam. As a journalist of over 25 years, stories are what make my world turn. Reporting live from the Dallas Newsroom tonight, Jeff Crilly, Fox 4 News. But in 2008, I took the jump from my familiar life and started a PR firm from my home. We're talking about anyone with a camcorder like the one I'm using becomes a television network. We started slowly growing the company and we now have over a hundred clients and we've branched into the world of live digital broadcasting. I now own eight different TV studios and have a huge team. And the stories that I now get to share are sometimes the most important of my life. Life has a funny way of coming around full circle. This is The Jeff Crilly Show. Well, I think you would all agree with me that uh, we've got problems in our society that goes way beyond who the president is. I think we all have a stress epidemic going on. Uh, we're over medicating ourselves, sometimes with alcohol or caffeine. We're wired, we're tired, we're not getting enough sleep. To talk about that, uh, Gori Juniker. She is a uh, healthy living expert, author, and international keynote speaker. Thanks for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Jeff, and namaste to everybody. Oh, I love it. I love it. So you have your whole life, have you been kind of a holistic person? Yes. I mean, um, I have a little story to share with sure. everybody is how I got into this path. So I grew up in uh, Mumbai in India, and I remember that every day, you know, with mom and dad, we would go to the market and pick up some fresh vegetables to, uh, and mom would make, you know, uh, these lovely lunch and dinners all fresh. And um, I remember that one day I was helping mom and I was cutting some vegetables and I got a little cut. So mom said, you know what, just go and wash your um, finger, just take a little dab of turmeric and just dab it on the cut. And I was just thinking how could something, something as simple as turmeric could actually help with healing. You know, I listened to my mom, you know, went and uh, washed my finger took a dab of turmeric and just put it on the, on the on my cut. And after a couple of days, I was so amazed to find that it had completely um, healed my mood. Wow. And that got me into thinking, what exactly is this? And then uh, mom was explaining, you know, talking more about Ayurveda, mm -hmm. which is the ancient system of healing that developed in, in India more than 5,000 years ago. No kidding. And um, I got thinking into, I want to learn more about this, this holistic healing. I got um, my formal training as an Ayurvedic physician in India, um, and um, I was working in the clinic, uh, one clinic for at least a year to get more knowledge and work with different people and looked at you know what can, how Ayurveda can help. And then I came back here to the U.S. and got my master's in nutrition, became a registered dietitian, uh, became a certified diabetes educator. I worked in the hospitals for a very long time. And then I thought in thinking that I need to bring this knowledge back to the people. Yes. And that's where I started with my private practice, which is Ayur Nutrition, which is an integration between Ayurveda and modern nutrition. Outstanding. We're going to pull up her website. And as we scroll down the website, I think your timing is perfect because I think uh, we all are now growing suspicious of big pharma and, uh, you know, every solution doesn't have to be found in a pill. And some people are taking so many pills that are interacting with their body differently that mm -hmm. um, they're just messed up. Uh, when you're introducing this idea to your uh, clients, mm -hmm. do, is it a foreign idea or are they, uh, I mean, are you preaching to the choir? <laughs> That's a wonderful, wonderful um, question, uh, Jeff. So how I explain to a lot of people uh, learn about Ayurveda through yoga. Mm -hmm. And a lot of time I tell people is that, you know, if you've heard about yoga, Ayurveda is a sister science of uh, yoga. So Ayurveda talks more about gut health, talks about more of different foods that are more in line with your doshas, which is basically your body physiologies, what you should be eating according to your doshas, what should be a lifestyle, how we should be eating seasonally, in fact, as well. How can we actually help with the digestion? Because in Ayurveda, we believe that the seat of our health is our digestion, which is called Agni. So as long we have a very strong digestion, it means we are able to absorb nutrients correctly. We're going to have those building blocks that the body needs to build those for a body to, you know, to have a more healthier 
Mori as well. Sure. As I was doing research for the show, I uh, just put Ayurveda into YouTube and I found a great video. It was done by National Geographic. Let's go ahead and roll the clip. You know, recently everybody's been telling me, Chaz, you look so calm, you look so peaceful. It's not because I've given up all my worldly possessions or I'm free from all the troubles in life and men. No, it's because I am in the capital of Ayurveda, Kerala. Ayurveda is the ancient way of life of India that goes back to around 3,000 years. 30% of Kerala's 1.2 million international tourists visit with Ayurvedic treatments in mind. We are in an Ayurvedic village, so let's bring in a doctor. The doctor lies. Can you tell us about Ayurveda? All human beings have all these three energies. Okay. They are called Vata, Pitta and Kapha. Ayurveda believes that every human body is composed of three doshas. Vata, Pitta and Kapha. One of these doshas is always more dominating than the others, which is said to give the person certain characteristics. I'm with the Ayurvedic chef today and I have been told that I'm Vata dosha. So what am I supposed to eat? Because you're supposed to eat according to your doshas. Okay, okay. Beetroot okay. toren. Coconut oil. Mustard seeds. Curry leaves. Onion. Chilies. Purat dal, beetroot, and coconut. This food looks good, tastes good, and is good for me. It is believed that there are more than 600 herbs that are used in Ayurveda, and most of these are everyday household items. Let's go and meet Dr. Lal again to see what more Ayurveda has in store. What kind of treatments will I get over here? Uh, the external treatments yeah. comprises the various abhyanga massages and different other kinds it's of It's my treatments. favorite part. I love yeah. those massages. These massages aren't your regular spa days. These materials and methods were prescribed by our great, great ancestors and they're supposed to rejuvenate our body. People all over the world are now drinking turmeric shots in cafes in London and Paris. But what is that? That is haldi. We've known about all these beautiful foods through the holistic practice of Ayurveda. And this is another reason I am so proud of my India. Wow, I thought the National Geographic did a great job kind of breaking it down. Tell us one of your favorite success stories. So, um, you know, on top of my mind, um, I mean, there are a lot of, I, I've worked with a lot of different clients with different issues, but uh, what comes to my mind specifically um, with regards to gut health, because, you know, right now the focus is so much on the gut health. I remember this client who came in who said that, you know, she had difficulty even um, in digesting the simple foods. So we started working with her. You know, what we did is that we integrated Ayurveda and nutrition, both for her. And what we did is try to first look at where she stands with her Ayurveda, you know, with Ayurvedic Prakriti, what is her doshas and what is the equilibrium, what is the balance of the doshas. And definitely what we found that, you know, what her doshas were and there was a lot of imbalance. And uh, we educated her about Ayurveda and how Ayurveda can help her with regards to gut health. We introduced a lot of different spices in her, in her foods, which are easy for her, easy for her gut. And slowly, we reintroduce some of the foods for her. Uh, we uh, introduce some of the modern concepts as well, because we want to make sure that, you know, the modern nutrition part that, you know, um, she has all the different building blocks, all the nutrients that she needs. Sure. And um, when we started working with her slowly, uh, introducing um, the Ayurvedic concepts, the spices, uh, the modern nutrition part. We also worked on stress management for her because um, both in Ayurveda and in, when it comes to modern nutrition, we find that stress, you know, stress management is an important part in, in what we call the lifestyle management is important as well. So when we started working with her in, let's say, in three to six months, we found that she was able to reintroduce some of the foods that earlier it was difficult for her to digest. And, um, you know, I mean, she was so happy. I remember her telling me that, you know, she had gone out for a vacation and she said, you know, I was able to have some of the foods that I felt early in the past, I just couldn't. 
and she was able to have some of the food she used to have in the past. So that was one of the biggest success stories for me is to have somebody who could actually have and enjoy those foods that she could in the past. And now, again, slowly she's able to reintroduce and have a much more successful life. She's much more happier, feels such more, much more healthier. Yes. Um, her stress is uh, well controlled. So I think that, you know, that definitely that integrative approach definitely helped her. Outstanding. You've also written two books. I'm going to hold up the first book. This is a primer on Ayurveda. Uh, tell us like one takeaway from the book. So this uh, book that we have specifically, the primer Ayurveda, we have, and this is co-authored by myself and uh, Pushpa Sandarajan. She is a fellow dietitian as well. And both of us love Ayurveda. Both of us are Ayurveda practitioners. And we thought that we needed to bring this knowledge into the registered dietitians as well as healthcare professionals. And that's where we devised our, our book, which gives a glimpse about Ayurveda to registered dietitians and healthcare professionals. So completely written for uh, healthcare professionals has a lot of information about especially the Ayurvedic nutrition part as well. Outstanding. And then the follow-up book, we're going to put that on the screen. Um, this one it, it combines with yoga. Correct, correct. And this is more for uh, the general public that we brought in because we felt that we needed something to bring in for the general public as well and introduce both the Ayurvedic um, concepts as well as the yoga as well. And this is a wonderful way for people to learn more about Ayurveda and how they can actually benefit from some of the, you know, the spices and things. We have wonderful recipes as part of our book. So definitely sure. check them out. So uh, we're going to pull up some video of yoga from our, our video library. And my wife is a big yoga person. Um, I'm, I'm more of a go to the gym and lift weights. <laughs> but it's different. It, it works different parts of the body. And, and I have to imagine that yoga is really better for your stress level, isn't it? Absolutely. Absolutely. I mean, what I tell a lot of my patients and my clients is that we have to introduce some sort of stress management um, until you – it's great to work on the food. But we definitely want to make sure that you add some part of stress management into your daily life. So it may be yoga if you're doing an activity and things. But again, before you start any kind of physical activity, make sure you're talking to the doctor before you start that. Sure. You're also a big fan of massage. Tell us about why that's so important. Yeah, so massage therapy. I am, so besides being a registered dietitian, I'm also a licensed massage therapist as well. And um, prior to COVID, I uh, did a lot of the Ayurvedic therapies. I introduced that as well. And one of the things I found that massage therapy actually helps a lot with the stress management. In fact, you know, for a lot of my uh, patients and clients uh, prior to the COVID, when I had the, I had the in-person clinic, uh, we would have them, you know, um, let's say a perfect example I'll give you is for a person with diabetes, you know, we would have them check their blood sugars before they had an abhyanga massage, which is like an oil massage. And we had them check their blood sugars before. And then after, and we would see a drop of a 30 to 40 point difference. Unbelievable. Unbelievable. And this was a perfect uh, feedback for me to tell our clients is how the stress actually affects the blood sugars. And four, as I said, is important. But along with that, stress management becomes an important part along with your lifestyle as well. So in the final minute or so, I want you to talk to the viewer who is like I described it earlier, wired, tired, they just, they seem, it seems like they're on a hamster wheel that they can't get off of. Uh, what final thoughts would you like to leave them with? So the, the thing I will definitely tell everybody is that it starts with your food, it starts with your gut. Make sure that if you can, as much as freshly cooked food, and I'm a big fan of home cooked meals, as much as you can, you know, you can, you definitely want to focus on freshly cooked meals and in different spices add in different foods that are more available in the season. So eat seasonally. And uh, along with that, make sure that you are adding in the lifestyle with the stress management. Outstanding. You've been an amazing guest. We're going to end with the website, which again is runutrition.com. Uh, Gauri, thank you so much for coming on the show. Thank you so much, Jeff, and thank you for this opportunity. You bet. That's it for now. We'll see you next time.